Hi folks. Thank you for joining me. It's Thursday night. Both cats just got fed and Dee Dee's running around here crazy right now. And she's gonna try to get in the door there. Uh, this is a hard subject and it's kind of personal, but I've been debating for a long time if I should share this. <clears throat> but uh, I keep thinking of people out there who may be going through the same stuff and they always think it's them, them doing it, you know. And uh, the title of this video, I think, is Loving a Narcissist. You know, the hard thing about, there's one thing about working with a narcissist, but it's another thing when you love them and spend your life with them or whatever. And no, I'm not talking about my wife, so <laughs> this is more past stuff. And uh, it wasn't until about a year ago when I, I was explained, a good friend of mine explained to me when I was telling her what situations I was facing, what a narcissist was. And I think back, wow, I wish I would have known this 30 years ago. You know, I've heard of the word, but I never quite comprehended what it was. And, and uh, I was never into the isms and all the different type of things like that. But I just wanted to share some, some thoughts with you. A narcissist, basically, I'm going to go through some of the, the, the things here. A narcissist is somebody who gets into your head. And in the last months, or if not almost a year now, I have been on what they call uh, end of contact. And I just purpose not to contact them. If they want to visit with me, that is perfectly fine. But when things have always been one-sided, see a narcissist, from what I understand, is somebody who you can never please them. You can never say what they want you to hear. You're never good enough. Uh, you've always got to cater to them. And if they do show interest in you or try to help you, then you owe them. See? And uh, many times I can remember driving home with my wife and my kids asking her, what in the world did I do to deserve that? What did I say or do? And she would say, you just simply didn't answer their questions with what they wanted to hear. Or if they're in a good mood and you weren't in a good enough mood, then they criticized you or told you to smile, told you to set up straight, told you to this and that. They're always trying to conform you to their image. They never accept you as you are. See? And the problem is, when you look at scriptural stuff, one of the things they do, if you're a Christian, is they hold it over your head. Oh, you're not acting like a good enough Christian. Oh, you're not responding right. Oh, you're not loving enough. You're not giving enough. So it's always our fault. And no one has ever really sat out and explained to me some of this stuff until, like I say, about a year ago. And then I, it, it helped me to see some of this. Um, they may tell you to do small things or big things, but they're telling you what you need to do. They're telling you what you need to act or not act, or uh, or even eat. You know, sometimes I only, there are certain restaurants I only get to go to maybe three times a year, and they have a problem with me ordering the same thing. It's my problem is I don't even remember what they ordered last time, so I don't care. But they seem to remember what I ordered. See? The tension is something that you can feel and cut with a knife the closer you are to them. The closer and the longer you spend with them, the more tension you get. When you come home, you're either relieved or you're just exhausted from the emotional wear that they cause you. And even when they try to show interest in you and they try to buy your love or uh, 
stuff like that. It's like you don't want to have them show interest because they're just going to turn around and criticize you. They're just going to say, why don't you do it this way? Why don't you do it their way? See? And so you're never good enough. You never act right in their minds. Again, they have a complete conceived idea. And for years, I kept asking the Father, it's like, Lord, what am I doing wrong? Am I, how do I, am I too much like them? Uh, I mean, am I doing that to them? Why are they the only people that I react to this? I have a business. I've been in multiple churches on multiple boards on different things. And it's like, okay, why do I get this from those particular people, loved ones, but I don't get it from other people? And they might even say the same thing. But see, they don't have the same expectations. Recently, what sparked this is I got a non-birthday card that had some old letters that I didn't know was even kept back in 83 before I got married when I was trying to work on relationships with the parties involved. And uh, so basically, we, I decided that that little reply to the letter was not humorous. It was a guilt trip. They're trying to guilt me into this. See, it's your fault you've been trying to have a relationship and you just keep screwing it up. And again, I can't read my writing. Uh, oh, and then the pat on the back. Have you ever felt like people who pat you on the back have a knife in the other hand twisting your stomach and twisting your gut? And yes, they're smiling and complimenting to you, but you know that you're going to get it later. It's going to be worse on you later. I'm a failure because I can't please them. And pretty soon your whole self-esteem is you're looking around, how can I please all these other people? How can I? And sometimes if they, other people praise you, you think this is false praise because the people you care the most about don't praise you or praise you falsely. They will even issue instructions and tell you how you should act and do things. I think I kind of covered that. But they will also feel they have the right to say anything they want about your wife, your kids, your family, your job situation. And uh, I ran a business for a number of years and then at a, I decided to go and, and I was getting burned out. And then after I got back into it, I realized I have to control the business and not, not let it control me, see? So you got to know when to get in and when I, But I was told that I was, if I finally got a real job being hired by somebody else. Even though I had three or four employees of my own, I felt I got a real job. Or I was even told one time, don't worry about it, we hired a professional. It's like, we got three or four company trucks, trailers. <laughs> People, insurance companies call us to do inspections because we're professionals. See how the insults goes. And the thing is, anyone who patronizes them is really a good person. They just think highly. Um, it's sad when you see and hear how they brag and talk about other people being so friendly and nice to them. They're just so wonderful people. And I'm just so criminal and terrible. Well, they don't have to live with you. Have you ever thought of that? So you're, you can't say some of this stuff. They force their views on you. And I've run into multiple church people who are verbal abusers. The first thing they say to you is, oh, you're, you're stacking verses. Oh, yeah, you're, you're taking stuff out of context. And oh, you're, you're pushing your own agenda and all this her stuff. And it's like, prove it. Put it on paper. They attack your character. That's what a narcissist does. They attack your character and who you are. Same with, they're usually verbal abusers, verbal manipulators. And then you're criticizing yourself. Am I a narcissist? Am I like them? Do I do that to other people? Now I do know when I first got married that Yahuwah, our Heavenly Father, made it clear before I married my wife that he said, you're a male chauvinist pig and you gotta knock this off. And because I was raised in that mentality. 
and stuff. And so he had to really do a couple of years of hard work on me and breaking and hurting me to get me to realize that if I'm going to marry one of his daughters, that you better shape up. Why are so few people the only ones I really uh, that are really like this? Say, like I said before, when I'm in business, when I'm around in public, when I'm in churches and stuff, uh, this doesn't seem to happen. But uh, it's just sad. You love people. You want to be with them because that's what the right thing to do is. The Father says to honor people. But yet, on the other hand, you just get sick to your stomach even have to call them to say you're going to come and see them. And they're the biggest, the last thing that I see through the years of dealing with a narcissist uh, in different ways is I've never seen repentance. I've never seen, if they say the word sorry, it's because they're emotionally overcome with something. And it's very short-lived. There's no sign of changing because you have to change. I have to change for them. So I want to encourage you to seek the Heavenly Father and ask His Holy Spirit, ask Him to, sit, to speak to you through the Holy Spirit and, and, and to deal with this stuff because the emotional drain, I can see why in the Old Testament it talks about the sins of the fathers go on to the third and fourth generations of the kids. See, I don't want to pass this down to my kids or my grandkids. I don't want to be like certain things, see? And so, and if I would have known this, I'm looking at how I should, could have shielded my kids, shielded my family, more from the people that were corrupting and hurting them. Again, a narcissist is free to say whatever they want to you, but you better watch your P's and Q's when you're around them. So uh, I want to encourage you people that uh, we got to take a stand. Uh, obedience to the Father. I don't know if this is really applicable or not, but Yeshua did not take any stuff off of the Pharisees. He didn't take stuff off of people. He just gave it right back to them sometimes. And yes, I know he's got the spirit of the Father giving him wisdom and guidance and all that stuff. And we should have the same thing. But uh, I just wanted to encourage you. Sometimes sharing your feelings with other people, uh, I can see why counseling classes are good. Uh, I never wanted to be a counselor because I, I get depressed when I hear other people's problems <laughs> and stuff. So, Heavenly Father, I'm so glad that you are continuously, I just feel like I'm being burned in the fire in many different areas. And I want to conform to your ways and to submit to you and be humble and to honor you. And I also want to warn my brothers and sisters out there who maybe had their own struggles and maybe never even thought of this, Father. Uh, wow, it's, to me it's been a game changer. Because, Father, I want to glorify you. And I don't want to be controlled by other people or by man. I want to be submissive to your spirit. This is just another form of people trying to control us, Lord. Help me, Lord, to take a stand. Help people out there to take a stand. We want to be humble. But what is it? We have to be bold as something and or soft as doves and bold as sharp as serpents. I've never understood some of that stuff, but thank you in Yeshua's name. Amen.